me a little squonker. It's me a little squonker and today um, I have the books I have read I have read so far within the year. Now, I know what you're thinking. Gillian, how many books have you read? I've read six. Six books. And I'm gonna have like a whole video explaining it. I already have a blog post blog post explaining where the hell I've been, but like I'll give a more detailed description of where I have been um, on a later date. It's just that I have to figure out what I really want to do with that. Um, so without further ado, um, let's get into it. I need to grab my phone. And my room is like an actual wreck right now, so like this is fun. So according to my Goodreads, Technically, the first book I finished is actually not on top of this. Is The Bank Chronicles by Cassandra Clare alongside Sarah Rees Brennan and Maureen Johnson. I have read a few books, ironically, all collaboration with that had Maureen Johnson in it, and like I don't know how I like personally feel about Maureen Johnson. I'm not saying I don't like her, I just know that like. She is also part of the Lady Janes with Cynthia Hand and Brody Ashton for that, and I have yet to read that series. Yeah, and so basically this is just a compilation of short stories featuring Magnus Bane in several situations. Um, and we see from like the timeline of the Infernal Devices, we see the timeline of like the present day, well not really present day, but like further back present day like city of bones present day um and yeah um i kind of liked seeing like the evolution of bane in a way or of magnus because um like it's just really nice because you hear all these stories like that are like mentioned here and there in the books and um there's not really like an explanation of it it'll just be like subtly mentioned and then like they actually feature the story and it's like ah yes that's the story they were talking about but like i really didn't ask for this and like yeah um i don't know like what i initially feel about it i just know that it was basically like another way for cassandra clear to get money and for her to like not only like do this but like to also expand on the universe as well i know there have been like several posts that i have been seeing like either Tumbling over on Tumblr, no pun intended, or just on Goodreads, or even like the Owlcrate Society, which is I'm a group of on Facebook for Owlcrate, and um, they're just saying that like Cassandra Clare is just basically milking the series out, and like she's trying to milk the universe out, but personally, like I'm kind of glad we're like done with like the City of Bones era, and now we're moving on to like um, the Chain of Gold, and I forget what that series is going to be called but like yeah um i haven't read chain of gold yet I haven't read like all the other books that are associated with cassandra claire um i try to not read all cassandra claire's books all at once because it's just a lot to take in and she does have a lot of books in that series like as it is so yeah um overall rating for this book is a three out of five stars I read <laughs> the next book I read I'm surprised I haven't gotten rid of this yet um, but I think I will and that is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli I love Becky Albertalli I loved the um, Love Victor series at that's on Hulu I love the Love Simon series or the Love Simon movie I love the book Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda it's just that with this book I felt like it was, again, like with the Bane Chronicles, I really didn't ask for this. I know a lot of people have, like, mixed feelings about this book, but, like, my thing is that I feel like it's low-key a bad representation for bisexuality, um, only because there have- let me just- let me quickly read off my review for this book real quick, because I spurt- I spurt it out in, like, random things, um, so yeah, here here's my initial review. It just said I had a call from potential spam, and then it just like yeeted itself out. So that's why I made that face. Um, this this is exactly what I said. 
hold on, hold on, hold on. This book was unnecessary. Leah was the one, Leah was the one pissed that Simon didn't come out to him in the first book because she thinks that she is better than Abby, parentheses, question mark. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, so that was a thing in the Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens agenda book that I got really frustrated with, is that Leah thinks that because she has this best friend title, she thinks that, like, everything should be told to him. But, you know, like, coming out, like, it's not, like, a special title to, like, be granted, like, oh, I'm the first person he came out to. Like, that's not a title you should just, like, flaunt around. Anyway, um... Also, just saying by curious, or no, this is what I'm about to say, okay. Also, just say by curious, not low-key by, no one says that. That's another thing that pissed me off in this book, is, is that they said, like, one of the characters, I think it was Abby, that said, oh, I'm low-key by. Like, you don't say that. Like, that's not something, like, in the LGBT community, that's not something that people say. They just say that they're bi-curious. They don't say low-key bi, because if you're low-key bi, then that just means you're bi-curious. Like, come on now. Anyway, um, also, is Abby, if Abby is making you mad, then don't date her. Go on a date with a guy that literally is trying to do everything for you, and you're just brushing it off. There is a part in the book where, I think it was prom, um, I already forgot this girl's name. Leah was just like, oh, like, I don't want you to, like, do this for me. Like, that's not necessary. And the guy literally, like, paid for everything. And the, this guy has, like, a huge crush on her. And Leah just kind of, like, brushed it off. And I'm just like, huh, okay. Um, he literally brought her, he literally bought her the purse. And Leah's like, no, you don't have to do that. But he did it because he likes her. Like, like, like her. I also feel like Leah could have told Simon about it because there was a time where they were all in bed and she's like, I can tell him. Nah. And she kept it a secret until the very end. Leah could have just said it, but she decided to go. She decided until she got caught and was like, <laughs> and the rest of the crew was like, wow. It was literally, I was trying to capture this meme and... So basically, Leah was try like didn't want to come out until she got like caught, and the crew was literally the meme of, wow. That's how I felt when listening to that situation. Um, it could have been mentioned in Simon, but it wasn't because Leah needed her own book. So the premise of Leah on the Offbeat. If I need to do like a full depth in re review of Leah on the Offbeat and why I don't like this book, I can. But basically, the whole premise of Leah on Offbeat is that Leah is Simon's best friend, and it takes place within the same universe as Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda slash Love Simon. Um, and basically, Leah is bisexual, but she came out to her mom, but she hasn't came out to her parents yet, and she's having a crush on Abby, who is in a relationship at the time during this novel, um with one of the characters who I can't name for the life of me and um, yeah again like with the Bane Chronicles I felt like this book was really unnecessary and I felt like it just gave a bad representation for people who are bisexual or people who identify as bisexual um and I just felt like low-key this is what I think low-key and like I'm not trying to like establish this but like I felt like Leah was like trying to be like Simon in a way because minus the fact that Simon no 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 Leah was trying to be like Simon because in a way Simon versus the homo sapiens agenda was the fact that Simon was emailing this mysterious person and then he like had a force or no, he was outed. There we go. That's the word I was trying to look for. He was outed by this douchebag. And, um, basically, like, school knows. And at the same time, like, Simon was also, like, dealing with his drama. But he also was dealing with the friendship. And one of the big things that did piss me off in Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda is, like, how I mentioned before, like, Leah wanted this title 
of like, hey, like, I'm the first person that Simon came out to or whatever, but then Leah was like, oh, like, I don't really want anyone to know about, like, what's going on, um, except for my mom. And, like, don't get me wrong, like, every person who does identify within the LGBT community does have their preferences in terms of who they're going to come out to, who they are confident in sharing, like, that personality type slash, um, the w who they are with that person, and then they just kind of, like, shun it from the rest of, like, the rest of the people who they don't want to know. But, like, at the same time, I felt like Leah just wanted, like, this somewhat same relationship or not relationships, same, like, scenario and way that Simon had, and this book just made me really mad. Again, if you want my, like, full input on Leah and Offbeat, is it Leah and Offbeat or Leah on, Leah on the Offbeat, <laughs> if you want a full review on why I do not like Leah on, well, perfect, because I was, like, just about done with that review anyway. Um, the next book I can't fine for some reason but um the next book is the yellow brick war by danielle page this is the third book within the dorothy must die series um here's my thing about this series is that the dorothy must die like the first book is a almost 400 pages like maybe like 375 like that's a good chunk book and then you look at like wicked world the wicked will rise yellow brick road and the end of oz and they're all like 275 like that's a whole like 100 page like chunk that's just gone and i gave the last book a three out of five stars and i'm giving this one a three out of five star only because um basically like this book was a little bit all over the place because Amy, like, the whole premise of, um, the Dorothy Must Die series is that Amy, who is this outcast when in her small town in Kansas, somehow gets sucked into this world where, um, she is back in Oz and basically Dorothy is now, like, the ruler of Oz and she's making Oz a living hell. And you go, like, Turns out, like, the Scarecrow is just this, like, mean person who's a very, has a very twisted mind. Um, the Tin Man is just, like, this hopeless romantic who wants to, like, Dorothy to fall in love with her. And the Cowardly Lion is no longer cowardly. Um, he just straight up just, like, eats people and, like, eats the civilians. And it's kind of fucking terrifying. And... Don't get me wrong, what Danielle Page did to, like, revamp this story to make it in a more futuristic setting is fucking amazing, and I highly recommend this series. It's just that, like, my only problem with this series is that the books are so damn short once you get past the first one. And so, I have, I have the last book. This is the last book in the series. This is how thick the, um, last book is, and... Th this book alone is 277 pages, and I don't think, like, to end a series off like that, it doesn't need to be 277 pages. Like, that, in my opinion, with, like, the amount of pages, because that's basically, like, the average for, like, the other two in this series. It doesn't need to be that long. Like, flesh out the series a little bit, but at the same time, you, like, you don't want to, like, make it so bland and boring. Um, there are, like, other side characters to this and, like, this little troop that we have for the, um, for Amy, and it's just a lot. There's a lot of characters in this series. It's not like Six of Crows where, like, you have the main six people, but, like, at the same time, like, you have, like, the six different perspectives that you're trying to keep track of, which is one thing I didn't like in Six of Crows, and that's why I didn't, like... I ended up giving Six of Crows such a low rating, um, but, yeah, um, I'm still gonna finish the series because I do want to, like, see what happens in it, and, yeah, um, again, I gave the series a 3 out of 5 stars. I have is Persepolis, and this is the complete Persepolis, um, I know there are, like, four different volumes in Persepolis, um, but this is the complete one. I actually had to read this for my world history class, um, because it does brush up on the Iranian war, or no, Iranian, 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 
the Iran war. There we go. Um, and basically it is told through a graphic novel, but it is also an autobiography, which is so cool. Um, and it basically, it just starts out with Marjan, who is the main character of the story. And she tells her story like through like, I don't know if the camera will focus, but like she tells her story through like these gra like these series of comic strips and you basically just see a whole like evolution of Marjan and how like she goes from this daughter to then her escaping because her parents are allowing her to um what's it called to like just venturing off in Austria and then she goes like her family visits her and it's it's a real wild ride I'm telling you that right now and um highly recommend this um for classrooms as well um it does get like a little touchy here and there because obviously like it does feature some things like it does feature some drug use here and there but like at the same time it's a really he heavy subject but the way that Marjan um writes it and tries to convey what is happening is subtle but like at the same time like it's also impactful because you get to see like how the current events of the situation are affecting her and not only her but like also her family and her surroundings as well um and i did rate this book a four out of five stars i haven't rated anything a four in a while so i like this book this book took me forever to read because there was a point where like i had to do a book quiz on it and you could like tell in the spine where like i stopped like i kind of stopped like right here and then over the course of like the quarantine i went ahead and just finished it so yeah really recommend this for the classroom really recommend this for like basically junior high or like high school and up because it is such a good book and it talks about also a current event that they really don't touch about in school so there's that I have is actually a picture book um and it is also a book that my mom recommended to her team um because she is an English teacher and that is Little Leaders Bold Women in Black History by Vashti Harrison and the really sad thing about like not the concept of this book because don't get me wrong it is such a really cute book is that she was the only person who recommended this book to her team and basically she was shut down for it which which I think is not the best um, decision making on that part. But anyway, um, first of all, these end pages, gorgeous. And then these illustrations, like, look at this, look at this. That's so darn cute. And basically it just touches, it starts, where is this? It starts in the 1750s and it goes all the way up to, um, it goes all the way up into the present because it talks about, um, uh, Dominique Dawes, um, uh, who is a famous gymnast, famous gymnast, Jesus Christ, um, but this book is really cute. It, it does have, like, somewhat the same concept as the, um, hundred, hundred, stories for girls i can't like think of the book right now but like i did read it last year um it has somewhat the same process of it. it this book is really cute especially like if you want to know more influential african-american women um who have served their time in america doing the great things that they've always done great in and get to see like how they grew up especially in the different time periods as well um but it also does like keep it short and sweet like it's probably like maybe this long and then it has an illustration on the side of it and it's just so cute they also have little leaders bold men in black history as well i do i really do want to get but nonetheless highly recommend this book um not only for black history month which is in february but like just any time especially for the time that we're living in right now and if your kids ever want to know like influential african americans highly recommend this obviously i gave that book a five out of five stars obviously and last but not least the most recent book i finished is you'd be mine by aaron han and i got this as an advanced reader copy 
um not too long ago and this has been like sitting on like my bookshelf over at school and I was like you know what this is such a short book like I just want to read it but <laughs> it took me a while to like actually get into it and just like overall finish it um because let me let me explain to you the dates that I've read this book um from the start of this year in 2020 so on the 24th of January till the 17th or the 16th of July that's how long it took me to read this book because I was busy reading other books as well as like among other things again I'll explain that in a different video but basically this is like about a girl named Annie and she gets found at that scared me she gets found at a bar singing with her band and she gets spotted to do a record label but on top of that she also gets spotted to do a tour with this guy named um named clay coolidge and he's a really well-known country singer and um basically like when elephants fly um it does also talk about drug abuse it talks about mental illness um as well and it's just a really heavy topic book but however this is a contemporary and basically the two get put together to like recreate the johnny and june um thing that happened in country music history and it just shows them like throughout the tour and what happens and a lot of heavy stuff does happen and obviously there is a romance in this um between the seven months that I have read this book, I've read this book on and off. Um, it is pretty good. It is a pretty good book. This book is 257 pages. Um, and it is a really sweet book because you do get to see how Annie just like develops not only as a musician and as a person but like also on tour because she is she is basically like the mom of the whole group in a way because not only does like she care about her band but like she also cares about the safety of clay and clay my battery's about to die but like you know what let's just do this anyway um but yeah basically this book sporadically talks about the mental illness and the drug abuse that's in this book as well um but it is sporadic like there's no like specific section i would tell you guys about that but i can't and yeah i think i think i think i think i gave this book a three out of five star it's a solid read solid read and yeah those are the six books that i have so far read so far um black post and reviews will come out for these books sometime later in the week um hopefully i can get around to editing this video sometime soon i am gonna get my computer battery looked at because long story short um zoom basically like crashed and broke my computer battery and i'm gonna get that looked at today when i'm filming this so hopefully all is well and yeah so be sure to like subscribe and comment down below what are your thoughts on some of these books let me know if you want to see an in-depth review on why i don't like leah and the offbeat um, also check out my Instagram because I recently started putting up my Owl Crate unboxings over on IGTV on Gillian Reads. And yeah, my name's Gillian. I make videos whenever I can. Still gotta figure out a solid schedule. And I'll see you next time.